this is Chapo. We're here, and I wanted to take a dip into young master Ben Shapino's latest <laughs> masterpiece. I am going to warn you, it is not as uproariously funny as his attempt at you writing a novel. Are, it's really tedious. Uh, this is really tedious, and he is, again, incredibly impressed with uh, like you know, what he thinks of in himself as this huge breadth of knowledge about Western civilization. He's a dumber Steve Bannon. But yeah, less Coke. Yeah. He's on he's on like you a need the coke to do that reading. monster energy drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve, Steve Bannon Steve Bannon does funny things. Like when he was like uh it was like the first week of Trump's presidency and they were like, doesn't the entire National Security Council just fucking hate each other? <laughs> Aren't you guys just getting nothing done and everyone hates the shit out of each other and it's just like a constant backstabbing and uh he's a you're messy just, bitch yeah you're just getting pushed out by people who've been in government and haven't just been writing blogs for 10 years and steve bannon was like well you know it's like uh it's like dostoevsky says all families are different <laughs> <laughs> he double so, fucked it up no the, he's so much better he's so much better than shapiro because if you hung out and this is why i think uh journalists love B bannon so much and why he was more ma magnetic just because if you're stuck in a room with both of these guys, one of them by the end of it is like, I want to kill myself. Only one of them is going to talk to you about how you should buy a minor league baseball team together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bannon, <laughs> Bannon, like, I feel like. I it, wonder if Bannon is the kind of Coke user I am where he just gets really supportive. Yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> oh, my like, God. Yeah. You should you're, write you're that play. Geert, Geert, you're doing such a good job in the <laughs> Netherlands, dude. We should you are take doing so great. a rock climbing class, like Geert, right now. Geert, right you're now, amazing. We Geert, your hair is amazing. Geert, I bet you'd be I good at you. it. That's why there are so many, like, good terrible far-right art projects is because steve bannon just hung out with enough guys and he's like yeah you should totally write a play where claudius comes back to life in modern day la and shows up <laughs> these gangbangers with classical knowledge or whatever the fuck he's into ben shapiro has some funny stuff like the he's had a bunch of things where he's like he has a, my favorite tweet from ben shapiro is the one where he goes um the fact that people listen to rap music instead of mozart proves that many people are stupid <laughs> but it's gotcha. just, it just like do you want to hang out with that guy no i don't want to hang out with either of them but i feel like yeah you you a higher chance of fun with bannon so uh the the title of ben shapino's so he makes you feel pretty the title of ben yeah. shapino's uh new book is called the right side of history how reason and moral purpose made the west great and this is like the newest entry in a line of these boilerplate fucking conservative dad books about like like you said this like I don't know, high school level intro yeah. to Western civilization, of which the point is, like, there's a reason America is the greatest country in the world, and it's because of God and rational thought. It's just and the, he, uh, he is literally uh, a one of those uh, Twitter accounts that just has classical Greek statuary. Like he's that oh, kind. He's, yeah. he's pivoting into that kind of right winger. Well, but, that's the new that's the new skin they're putting on racism mm -hmm. because they it's not palatable to be about but that literally categories. just bit him in the ass i don't know how he didn't see it coming just from a self-preservational kind of point of view it's like when a schlafly like you know smacked down equal rights uh, amendment and then she really thought she was going to get a, a cabinet position yeah. yeah and like gloria steinem who i think is a, a goof and i have a lot of problems with which is like she, she's she, the feds she, she too, is a feds, low key. Yeah. but she was like ah yeah. poor phyllis tommed her way right out of a job <laughs> Okay, so and then the subhead here and the flap copy just says, America has a God-shaped hole in its heart. Argue, <laughs> right, what? Ar Hold argue, on. Argues Excuse New York me? Times bestselling what? author Ben Shapiro. Hit me I in that God-shaped hole. And we shouldn't fill it with oh. politics and hate. We've oh got boy. a big-ass hole, and we need to stuff it with God, not can politics you, and you, hate. America's pussy but wide ass. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah, can you please God my nag hole? <laughs> America but, is gaping right but now. But I, I just want to <laughs> say, like, I keep, like I, I, the reason I wanted to talk about this and look at his book this week is, like, again, like, the backdrop to this is basically uh, the uh, pogrom that he is beginning to try to inspire both against Ilan Omar, uh, Muslim Muslims of any kind in this country, and uh, immigrants of any kind. Yeah. So he's trying to say that like, oh, we've become so divided and hateful. But like, here's let's look at it why. And I, I think it is interesting. Like the book is, like I said, dog shit and incredibly, incredibly it tedious. It is so. Bad. But I think. The, like I said, they pivot and like the um, what he's attempting to pull off here, I think, does speak to a, a certain kind of uh, right wing politics that uh, is trying to be uh, in vogue now. Because, I mean, 
famously about Ben Shapiro, again, he's another one of these very anti-Trump guys who, again, strangely have sort of come around on that all, for some know, odd yeah, reason. You know what it is? Yeah. I blame the Democrats for not being a reasonable it, opposition. Exactly. You yeah, went so, too far to the so left. Yeah. I, we did not read the whole book. I, I, I farmed out a few of these chapters. I read uh, the introduction and first chapter, which I think basically tell you everything you need to know. But I'd like to uh, you know, join, join me and us now in, in going through uh, some of this book. And I think, I think I, like it will become apparent what he's trying to do here. So the very first line of the book is, this book is about two mysteries. The first mystery, why are things so good? <laughs> the second mystery... <laughs> Why are we blowing it? And Damn, Matt, why I, am I so good? <laughs> what, so, uh, Matt, like you, you said, like his, why am I so thick? his politics is the conservatism of a time of plenty. Yep. And this is essentially what he's uh, setting up in his introduction is that like this Panglossian view of, uh, you know, America as like, hey, everything is so great. People have TVs and cars and like, you know, for the most part. You know, food is plentifully available, and like, but why are we so damn depressed? He like, also why? provides, by the way, extremely faulty uh, information on infant and maternal mortality rates. I'll, yeah, I'll get into that. So he goes, uh, in 1900, some 10 percent of all infants died before reaching their first birthday in the United States. In other countries, the number was far higher. Approximately one in every 100 mothers could expect a giant childbirth. And he's going like, oh using infant mortality rate as an example of like it's dropped dramatically and like as you did in like the 19th century or whatever. But the thing is like America still our infant mortality rate is dog shit compared to like other first world countries. It's dog shit compared to Cuba. Yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah. Cuba kicks our ass. He goes, we live in America. We live in an era in which the vast majority of the American population lives in climate controlled spaces with plenty of food, a car and at least one television. (laughs) And there's no way any of that will ever end. (laughs) We can speak with each other across thousands of miles instantaneous, instantaneously, find and collate information with a touch of a few keys, send money seamlessly whirring around the On globe. On the information superhighway. And buy products manufactured in dozens of different places for cents on the dollars without leaving our homes. It's like a 50s education Yeah, and he's going like, like, yeah, exactly. It's a film strip. I'm Joy McClure. Look at America's vast agricultural yields. Beep. It's fields of barley. Beep. Wheat, <laughs> beep, millet. Yeah, and then he goes on to say, um, there are no restrictions barring particular races or genders from particular jobs. No governmental rules designed to privilege one particular biological or religious in-group at the expense of any other out-group. What's a biological group? Oh, we know what he means. <laughs> but uh, I like to say, like, you know, everything's so good in America because, you know, we have these freedoms that, like, there are no laws uh, barring uh, the practice of religion or certain people from holding certain kind of jobs. Uh, unlike what me, Ben Shapiro, has been trying to accomplish in my entire political career, either at the you know National Review or Breitbart, <laughs> is setting up precisely those religious uh, tests for employment or yeah. holding office. I mean, there is a good chunk of the GOP base right now that literally thinks that there's like a law that can be enforced that's like, uh, if you're a if you're a Muslim, like you can't hold office in America. Yeah, no, there there's some some fucking copy pasta boomer meme going around about how there's some law in the books from the '50s that could be invoked to s- just kick Ilan Omar out of Congress and then oh, maybe deport her. Now, do like, we activate the dang 1954 alien laws? I spent a lot of time researching the law and. Uh, during the space race, there it was called the Moon Act, <laughs> and we could not have we could not have any persons or individual style humans who worship the moon, as it were. And Muslimically, they worship <laughs> the Quran, which is a lunar object. The Quran was ca- cast down by the demon god Muhammad from <laughs> lunar scenarios <laughs> to tactically ascertain. <laughs> A Kaaba style cube <laughs> here on Earth that connects with Muhammad and Allah, the moon, the the moon prince, as it were. And Ilan Omar, she will pray to this moon god every day. And due to the stipulations of the 1953 Moon Act, she will be rejected and ejected back to her lunar home. Yeah. Felix, as, yeah. as as you're well aware, one of the uh, one of the first uh, films, the silent, one of the first major silent films, is about our war on the Muslimic moon god. Mm-hmm. The French were very ahead of the, <laughs> ahead of the times. They've always had a problem with that. The, the spirit of Charles Martel was alive in that rocket that crashed into Allah's lunar Muslimic eye. <laughs> so. Uh, he could not see all the infidels that one day, but of course he repaired it using Islamic magics. 
So this is uh, <laughs> like I, I want to point out one of the oh, like the, the we were aware of the Ben Shapiro style when he's writing fiction, which is to just reuse cliches oh, God, in yeah. the most bears of men everywhere way possible. And then, like, uh, uh, describe the ghetto style chill up kid wearing a Bart Simpson t shirt. Homer says, Simpson t shirt. Kiss my ass, buddy. And Homer like, Simpson t shirt. Like, oh, wait, Homer it's Simpson. a Homer Simpson t shirt. He looked at it. I looked- have a Duffman t shirt. I have Desert Storm Bart. Of course. I have an Italian. I have never, never I seen don't a have Homer a Homer Simpson t shirt ever. I collect bootleg Barts yeah. and I don't own. It's not a thing, dude. He looked at his beeper. What's up? <laughs> the Budweiser commercial. Remember that it said. <laughs> so that that's his style of writing fiction. His his style of writing a what is a, like supposed to be a very serious nonfiction book that is about the big ideas of Western culture. What he does is he'll like he'll say uh, he'll say something like, "Okay, here conspiracies have replaced reason and subjective perceptions have re- have replaced objective observation. Facts have been buried to make way for our feelings." A society of essential oh, oils. I hate those feelings. A society so much. of essential oils and self-esteem what? has replaced the size society of logic. That is his attempt to be like. Those are uh, for the god-shaped hole. You need oil. Uh, uh, <laughs> you got to lube up that hole. Pithy with the essential or, oils. That, like that's his attempt to like craft like a like a like a, an interesting sentence or idea. And then what? Like he'll end a paragraph like that. And then what he does is every time over and over again spends the next page or so just dryly citing statistics. In the most boring way, he's like to prove my point. What I'll just said: Did you know just forty three percent of voters had a favorable opinion of Hillary Clinton, and thirty eight percent of voters had a favorable opinion? And then, literally, for another page in July two thousand seven, Pew Research found forty seven percent of just reciting he's statistics just like this, yeah. like, so that's not padding it out. Like, this is anything a bad on fucking poll numbers? Ex- excuse. It, this, like, yeah, exactly. This is, this is the way. Like, like uh, if you're, you're a bad anything. writer in college, this is how you pad out an I essay. I remember, by the way, like moving to New York and being like very sort of intimidated by everyone and how much they had read. And my friend Jen Pan, God love her, gave me the best advice ever because she went to read and she was like, Amber, the one thing you need to go into this knowing, everyone's lying about having done the reading. So if you read just a little bit, you will have read more than all of the people that went to these Ivy League schools. And he is that Harvard guy that lies about doing the reading. He's literally, he's, again, this is a high school student's, uh, like, term paper trick. No, and also, how are you going to hang any argument on unaggregated poll results? Like, these are literally individual polls of, like, and not even of, of, uh, of like, binary choices of, like, sentiment. Yeah. Approval. That just shows, yeah, yeah you're Approval just filling things out. Nothing. It's like this yeah. looks, goes, this 80, looks real. Eighty percent of Americans said America was more divided today than ever. Says who? Ever? I don't know. He's well. He's there. Are, there are citations here yeah, for it. No, sure but like, like one poll is never anything other than a transient snapshot. And again, this is all polls. It's all polls and holes like, holes deep with, argument. <laughs> with Ben Shapiro. And that, like I said, all these sightings of Gallup polls goes on for two pages, and then he gets back to like the point he's trying to make, which he says. Brutal division has infused every aspect of our social fabric. We can't watch a football game together without debating the merits of what protesting the during the world? national anthem. We literally can't. Or watch a television show without falling into debates over falling into debates over representation of women or go to church without arguing over our vote. We fight harder and Who more viciously. We fight harder and more viciously over smaller and smaller matters. The more frivolous the topic, the harsher the battles. What in the world happened? And then he goes, there are some trendy answers. Some blame our current political and social disintegration on heightened economic divides. Bah. And now, and now uh, he dismisses that right off the bat by saying, um, they say too many Americans feel left behind by the new globalized economy and that either mild protectionism or redistributionism will heal those ills. <laughs> That's they argue that the 1% has, have outpaced the 99%, that urbanites have outpaced rural Americans, that white collar jobs have outpaced blue collar jobs. And then he says, income mobility hasn't changed significantly in the United States since the 1970s. Yeah, it's exactly. yes, it it's stultified. <laughs> you fucking asshole. That's when it all went to shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, since the 1970s, uh, wages, America, the wages of the American workers have been totally stagnant totally in flat, four decades. Flatline for 40. And, 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 and there's right. been an accompanying 40 years of increased uh, efficiency. Yeah, no huge upset. That's, That's insane. Fine. And Matt, you'll like this. The next paragraph, he says, or productivity. Exactly, productivity has risen as wages have remained stagnant for yeah. four decades. Theft. And, and Matt, you'll you'll love this. He goes, the Great Depression didn't tear us apart the way we're torn apart today, and our economy has indeed grown steadily since two thousand nine. Uh, one of the, maybe one of the reasons it didn't tear us apart is because great we, fucking New Deal, you douchebag. Yeah. 
Exactly, because uh, of you know, uh, like the we WPA. Tried to address or, it or, yeah, exactly. Because we address the fucking thing instead of just letting the canker just grow unattended. Fucking gangrene is set in. No, I think it's because we filled our hole. We filled, we, <laughs> no, we emptied our hole. <laughs> Everyone in the Tennessee Valley got their holes filled up real without good their, without compensation. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't yeah, fair. Yeah. They did get uh, and up. then he talks about my family's still mad about. Yeah, that. he talks about race, blah blah blah. And which and by talking about race, he, he goes he spends about two pages just. Block quoting Ta-Nehisi Coates. Of course. He wrote this at 3 a.m. right before it was due. Oh, yeah, totally. And he goes, in truth, we're more racially equal than ever before in our history, more equal than any other society in human history. Go off, and then King. he goes on with the stats. In 1958, just 4% of Americans approved of black-white intermarriage. In 2003, that statistic was 87%. It, the, mm, that's yeah. still a lot of people who don't approve of interracial <laughs> relationships. 87% yeah. approved. In I know, but that's yeah. still a lot who don't. And then, you know, he he, ta- he says, like, it can't possibly be race because uh, we've solved those racial problems. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, I, I think he would find it more convenient to say that it was race, though, because like. No, because he's not going to fight the race war. He's determined to not actually say the loud, qu- the quiet part loud. Right. He's going to keep it neutral. And, and like that, that's his whole effort. And that's why he's been superseded by the by the real, you know, uh, stem winding uh, white populace because they're willing to do that. And he will not cross the rubicon which means him having to make up all this bullshit like you have to have he he won't cross the rubicon now but like we all know like he's had numerous comments about like trayvon martin would be alive today if he he wasn't a thug he gets as close as he can to the edge but he's determined that he's not going to cross it for now he could honestly just decide it it would age him and his whole thing is that he was like a wunderkind yeah he's like he still thinks of himself as a 35 year old child prodigy oh no totally little violin boy and then he goes, okay, the, a third popular argument suggests our national disintegration suggests technology is the culprit. Social media, we hear, is dividing us more than that. <laughs> and, and, you know, people he, said that why don't they call it a dumb phone? Uh, and he goes on to dismiss that as well. And he goes, finally, there's the most basic argument of all. For whatever reason, human nature has kicked back in. We're naturally tribal, naturally possessive, naturally angry. For a while, we suppressed those instincts. We called it the Enlightenment. Jonah Goldberg, in his masterful Suicide masterful. of the West, calls that overthrow of human instinct the miracle. So- yeah, you know, that's always good. Your, your theory should always depend on a literal miracle that you yeah. even call that. That's yeah. always a good sign that you've got a really persuasive a model. saves us from, uh, like, a ultimately hostile human nature that we're mean hateful creatures yeah so heart. that you turn human history into just this fucking fairy tale i mean it's the it's the opposite of dialectics it's the opposite of materialism it just says this is a totally just a fairy tale battle between good and evil you know what it is it's teleology yeah and it's and it's and it's just nothing but deus ex machina after deus ex machina it's just you're showing it. You're circling the remainder and saying, look, I have not solved this fucking equation. And you're just basically daring somebody to point it out. He says, this book argues that Western civilization, including our... This is the mo- Western civilization. <laughs> <laughs> this book argues that Western civilization, including our modern notions of values and reason and science, was built on deep foundations. And this book argues that we're tossing away what's best about our civilization because we've forgotten that those foundations even exist. So where did this book come from? It came from my sense, widely reflected, I I think, that we're tearing each other apart. Ah, Lisa! (laughs) That that realization hit me on a precise date, February 25th, 2016. Late in 2015, I'd started a speaking tour on college campuses. Oh, God, of course. First, of course, SCWs. we realized oh this when oh people were Jesus. mean to him on college. The entire thesis of this book. They're mean to me on college campuses, mommy. Was inspired by people being mean to him oh on, God, on college campuses. Oh, God, of course it was. And he goes, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> I gave a speech to students on campus, viewed a half million sure times, and, he, and he, he includes his viewing stats on YouTube, viewed a half million times online within oh, a week. Did you see his author bio? What, is it, what did it say? It literally ends with, and is one of one of the most requested campus speakers in the oh, country. Oh, God. And he said, uh, so I, I posited that. that all people of good heart want to fight racism, <laughs> but that vague charges of institutional racism and white privilege obscured individual evil and slandered the country more broadly. I attended the speech without security. Everything went well despite an attempt to pull the fire alarm, and students lined up for a broad questions and answer based session. Really, too. just well, everything went great. Someone tried to pull the fire alarm. Well, here he goes. Just three months later came the rude awakening. 
I was scheduled to give a speech to the Young Americas Foundation group at California State University at Los Angeles. Two weeks in advance of the speech, we began hearing rumblings about protests. The week before the speech, the president of the university announced the event had been canceled outright. I refused to accede to that clear breach of the First Amendment rights. My taxpayer dollars had gone to the California State University system, and I announced that I would show up anyway. My business partner, Jeremy Boring, I'm not kidding, that's, that's Jeremy I bet, Boring. I bet. Insisted I, I bring a security team, but I was pretty skeptical. After all, I'd never needed security for any event. Yet yeah, God is my bodyguard. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I lift four pounds. That's my fucking. How the security. fuck you miss a whole hundred shots? <laughs> yeah, and he goes. After all, uh, this wasn't Fallujah. This was a major college campus in the middle of my oh, home God. city. Yeah, just we to, all know there's nothing dangerous that ever happens on college campuses. Just to be safe, Jeremy hired security anyway. Thank God I listened. On the day of the scheduled event, our security team began hearing rumors that violence was in the offing. An hour before the event, the president of the university announced that he would back down and the police would protect the speech. As we approached the campus, we could see helicopters swirling overhead. And then he just goes on about like hundreds of student protesters had filled the hallway outside the auditorium. They had blocked off all the entrances. A few rioters were physically assaulting <laughs> students who wanted to enter. The police set up a backdoor route but could not only sneak students in two at a time. I put my t ear to the auditorium door. It sounded like a zombie apocalypse outside. <laughs> Literally more likely to die in like a random college campus school shooting yeah. than a you're more likely to Yeah, you're more likely to injure yourself like slipping in the cafeteria. Uh, excuse me. I mean, I think you can say, yes, there is a violence that, that befalls campuses. It tends to be from like The weird, National Guard. Yeah, the National Guard. <laughs> uh, excuse yeah. me. And it tends to be like weird psychopaths that uh, read too much Breitbart and bring a gun. Excuse me. You are minimizing this. One of these hooligans held Ben at arm's length while Ben futilely tried to strike him. <laughs> he was held his head, held his head, his head back. back. Yes, yeah. that was swinging his arms. Yes, he was we, flailing his little fists. Can we just get rid of colleges? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm uh, so sick. Yeah, not free college. Save, abolish so college. Save the left oh the God! Crap. Oh, I feel like a dam just burst. That's the solution to this. I've been saying this for oh, two years. God. We're getting the one thing out those Maoists and Lachinois were correct about. They yeah. just didn't quite understand why. No, we're, like every point of college is just in. It's just credentialism. It's for, about to get reproducing into the, the upper class. class. It's just laundering privilege. Every one of these skills that we need can be accomplished otherwise than this absurd institution. Get the fuck rid of it. It is a daycare. Oh, it is a daycare. It's a pro it is a propaganda mill. Uh, it's it's just it's a it's an ideological it's just an ideology factory. It sucks. It produces it Ben creates, Shapiro's. It creates class traitors is what it does. Yeah. It manufactures a it million sucks things in, in your head. It's yeah, I mean, to like wander, to turn class solidarity into alienation and yeah, to like launder Mark the said, privilege the, of the wealthy. The ruling class, uh, like, uh, immediately finds representatives from the people it's suppressing and puts them into little positions, and that's the entire. That's how the representation argument, like, yeah. still serves to reproduce capital. Yeah. Just abolish college. Come yep. on, Bernie. Just no say college. It. Well, I schools mean out, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, what, so schools been closed forever. <laughs> so, like. All like the thing that's funding college, you know, taxes in some cases and in other cases, it's like, uh, you know, like Bob Iger will send his kids there and so they can do what? So they can become influencers yeah. or work for his company. They can do that without college. Yeah. The, and, then the, the, and then the other people. Laura Lachlan's going to jail because she got her kid into college and she <laughs> now just takes pictures of her fucking tummy tea on Instagram. Yeah. Aunt Maggie. First of all. College has snared Lori Laughlin, <laughs> <laughs> who she was led astray. She's very here's Come on, so here's the things about Lori Laughlin. She's pretty and yeah. she's nice. Yeah. It's <laughs> and she it's was teeth. ensnared really by this teeth. scam that has been going on for hundreds of years, yeah. known as college. Just let your and all she just got caught. That school. was her. Crime. Yeah, and and now like all we hear with college is you know Ben Shapino tried to talk there and people threw a coconut at him <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care about yeah. anything. Nothing, that said, nothing, good, has nothing good has come out of the student movement since civil rights. 
Yeah, and yeah. there's nothing that couldn't. It's not. There's no. And there are advantages in bringing people together and stuff, but I feel like they are outweighed by the disadvantages. Well, specifically the, the as campuses have become completely isolated from the larger exactly. communities. Exactly. It's entirely. It's like, well, we're going to keep you in a tiny little vacuum right. sealed room, and, and they're like, like we're oh, doing politics, you and it's bring like, no, together. you're renovating the country club. Exactly. Like you bring people together, but just to end up sterilizing their activism yeah. by keeping it in that facing inward, totally inward facing and non-threatening milieu. Well, Felix, you say like you don't care if someone throws a coconut at Ben Shapiro's head. I don't care. I think they should all do it. <laughs> I think like there should be no speakers because it's just a scam for the speaker. They're just going to go. There, they're just yeah. going to go there and say shit they say in a YouTube video for a quarter of a million. Oh dollars. God, yeah. <laughs> so I think like all the like all the right wing students and all the left wing students. They should just have they just like put on armor and joust each other. All of them. Be so all them. Times. Yeah. You get your night. And you're both on one side, and your vote, and you're all rooting for your knight, and that's you know, how no, we're going to do it. There should be a referee. There should be a referee. No, you just settle it. You settle it with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, oh God! The Greek Week uh, contest at the end of Revenge yes. of the Nerds, okay, mm. where they had to like do the belt and that, and and that to do will the decide Trump trike, and they had to do the pageant, and that will decide who gets to invite speakers for the next yes. year: Noam Chomsky or Ben Shapiro. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah. how you do it. Clap your hands, everybody! Everybody, clap uh, your hands. Uh, Chris, edit in the uh, the music they do in Revenge of the Nerds. It's a great song. It's a great song. Clap your hands, everybody, and everybody, clap your hands. We lambda, 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 and Omega Moon. And we've come here on stage tonight to do a show for you. So, uh, you, like you say, Felix, you say you don't care if someone throws a coconut at Ben Shapiro, but I would submit this, you know, in response to that. After uh, the speech was over, I wanted to go out and mingle with the oh, protesters. Of course you did. At which point, my security team and the police pulled me backstage. If you go outside, one of the officers warned me. We can protect you from the first guy who throws a punch and also the second guy, but not the third guy. <laughs> here's, here's the thing, Mr. Shapino. I cannot count that high. I am not, ble I am not uh, blessed Hanukkah-y to count. <laughs> to I don't three. have your skills. I've never reached number three. I, I don't speak Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Shapiro, I'm afraid that when E. Honda throws his uh, Hardukin at you, we'll be able to block the first and the second strikes, but the third one will be beyond our grasp. I mean, like, this is this is proof enough to get rid of college. Yep. He can't yep. even... They're over, it's over two oh, punches yeah. thrown. Yep, that's so, enough. Uh, what Ben is saying in the introduction of this book is that, like, his entire motivation for writing this incredibly tedious book that's been written a million times before is when he finally realized... We're losing what made Western civilization great, but as he calls him, the violent rioters that like uh, made fun of him at college. The urban thugs. Yeah. The uh, hip hop thugs. Here's, just... here's my favorite part, though. He goes, uh, during the election cycle, I was highly critical of both candidates. As a conservative, I'd been a lifelong critic of Hillary Clinton, but I was also highly critical of Donald Trump. Thanks to my criticisms of Trump and thanks to my very public break with Breitbart News, an outlet I believed had become a propaganda tool for the Trump campaign, I quickly found myself tar targeted by a new breed of radical. In late March, the exorable Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos mm -hmm. penned a story at Breitbart openly praising the alt-right, including odes to racist cretins like Richard Spencer. I'm sorry, like, the difference in my mind between Richard Spencer and Ben Shapiro is nil. In in my, like, uh, ben likes uh, Jews and Richard Spencer doesn't. No, that's it. But, well, actually, no, I would argue actually, this. Actually, Spen Richard Spencer likes Jews, too. Well, he yeah, likes yeah, them in the phones are in Israel. Because, there. No, but yeah. that's the thing, is that they're the only real split in the right, the only real split in the right is what do you do with the Jews? One side of the right says Jews are fine. They're like white people as long as they have their own country and they should be there. The other side says no. They are a pathogen. They are bacteriological and they will destroy any society from within unless they're extirpated. That's the only real divide. I, I got to say, I d disagree. Mainly because I think their, uh, their audience share is completely different. So Ben Shapiro is trying to get college Republican nerds, like the, the, the Republicans that don't scare him, and Richard Spencer was trying to get like these downwardly mobile lumpens, and that didn't work because they quickly realized that he is also a fancy lad and a college Republican nerd. Yeah, yeah, exactly, a college Republican nerd that like got a haircut I mean, like, or whatever. I mean, so it's all about who they are trying to sort of triangulate their audience to. And yeah, I think they're aiming for different segments of yeah. the population, different but, market shares. But their personality and beliefs are. I would need a jeweler's loop to uh, yeah, tell yeah. tell the difference. So he goes, uh, egging on his alt-right followers, cheering on their jolly trollery. 
Milo sent me a picture of a black baby on the day of my son's birth that May. The point being that I was a cuck. <laughs> he is oh, a cuck. That's oh, his whole thing. No, that's 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 being a cuck is the degree to which you won't cross the fucking line. And he won't do it. He's defined his whole thing by not doing it. So he is the definitive cuck. So here's where he gets into um uh, he's reaching back into history f- to give you a, uh, a history of thought. Ooh, yes. And now, okay, when I start reading these sections, when I start reading these sections at home, if you have uh, some sort of alcohol available to you, or maybe like a, a, a vape pen, Fent a patch. bong, just a joint or something, I want you to uh, do a shot, take a hit, uh, use your intoxicant of choice every time you hear the phrase Jerusalem and Athens. Okay? Like Let's- I said, very popular cities also for Steve Bannon. <laughs> Let's go. No, dis- no difference. We believe freedom is built upon the twin notions that God created every human in his image and that human beings are capable of investigating ex- and exploring God's world. These notions were born in Jerusalem, Jerusalem and Athens, respectively. Oh God, This is such bad writing. Those twin notions, those diamonds of spiritual genius, Fuck off. built our civilization and built us as individuals. Diamonds of the gibberish. There he goes. If you believe that life is more than a materialistic pleasures and pain avoidance, you are a product of Jerusalem and Athens. Shot. If you believe that the government has no right to intrude upon the exercise of your individual will and that you are bound by moral duty to pursue virtue, you are a product of Jerusalem and Athens. If you believe that human beings are capable of bettering our world through the use of our reason and are bound by higher purpose to do so, you are a product of Jerusalem and Athens. Next paragraph, literally first sentence. Jerusalem and Athens (laughs) built science. Jerusalem and Athens built science. Science, Let's ask the Chinese (laughs) and Arabs about that. Let's ask the Chinese Arabs about that. Mayans, anybody. I am not, you know, opposed to the idea of discussing Western canon, again, because of how it's No, I like it. We talked about Moby Dick last week. Yeah, totally. (laughs) But, like, the idea that, like, virtue is a... He literally said virtue is a Western concept. right. That's literally psychotic. Yeah. That's... Actually, psychotic. Well, the thing is, is that all right? Take your own life. Think about how complicated it is to you. Tr- think about like trying to explain a week in your decision making to a friend of yours, or what happened in your life. It would be hard for you to even understand it, and you fucking. Live no, it. I don't know why I do. So what I do. think exactly. So think about how much harder it is to understand the incredible web and complexity of human history, the the, uh, the tapestry of events that made up our lives and, and why we're here. And uh, so when you think of how hard that is. I think you should keep that in mind anytime somebody wants to give you an explanation for how that world works with something like, well, once there were two enchanted cities <laughs> and the king lived there and he was very wise. This is the most simplistic fairy tale and yeah. it explicitly sells it to and, you and as here, a fairy tale. And here's the thing, like, uh, like the classical world... Uh, of like you know Plato and Aristotle like you know they did contribute like and then when the Roman Empire was Christian you know made into Christendom basically like like the ph- the philosophy of them like underscored what would later go on to be like yeah. you know Augustine and et cetera et cetera yeah, yeah, yeah. but like he's the Jerusalem and Athens thing what they're doing here is he keeps coming back to the phrase Judeo Christian well, values that yeah, made yeah. up thing That's we all love stock- again cuck move to oh, so cuck, cuck move it's a st- the, the, the the Jewish neocons are not cucks. Like they like have found a way to like be Jewish and a Republican in a way that does not cuck them. If you are a Buckley-esque Jew, you are the biggest cuck. You are literally the biggest cuck. He he's trying spends to be a wasp. His entire for- he's trying to be a wasp. He's he spends be a wasp. the entire fourth chapter just fawning over American Protestants. Yep. Oh God. No, like, he's he needs to watch a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> like, dude, you, you know, Gregory Peck. He in literally that movie, says they- like the shortcomings of Judaism what uh and like Catholicism to some degree uh are they that they relied on structure yeah. and rather than just faith. Yeah. Rather than just the idea of just, you know, religious ecstasy hitting you in the face. Yeah. Like they they well, he he said, picks he said the that's literal it, worst parts. Yeah, but he said that that's the thing that made it s- s- uh, spread faster. And the thing is, well, that's not that doesn't tell you it's better. It's just yeah, it's gonorrhea more, it's more spreads viral. Fast. Exactly, viral spreads, syphilis spreads really fast. Like that doesn't mean it's good just because it was more effective at spreading the pathogen of Christianity. But the uh, the, the point I want to make is he, he uses Jerusalem and Athens over and over again because he wants to harp on this 
the, the Judeo Christian, which as we've t- yeah. mentioned before on the show, is just, the idea he, that was he invent- wants back in the country. It's club an idea so that bad. was invented out of whole cloth, pretty much in the 1980s. Oh, yeah. to just do a patch on the software update of evangelical Christians, yep. yeah. so that they could like they could be like, it's oh, like we love Israel, Israel, state port. of Israel, boop, and they're like, oh yeah, now oh Ju- oh we're we're the heirs to the Judeo Christian yep. uh, heritage. And the funny part and is, is now that's that's. They don't need that anymore because now they're fully on board with, well, we need them there for People the rapture. People forget, too. We need them there like, for the end of the world. There were, like, serious Catholic anti-Semites oh, in, time. like, up as, like, West kind of into the early Pegler. 90s. Oh, yeah. Like, and it was Pegler just fine. It's shit. very recent that we we're like, we have to tone that down. Yeah, yeah. Like, but they've moved the Overton window back, and oh, he's yeah. really shocked by it. Yeah. When it wasn't that long ago, when uh, you could just James be an Burnham open anti-Semite. Kind of anti-Semitic. So, here he goes. He goes, uh, Jerusalem and Athens built science. That's one <laughs> right. sentence. The twin ideals of Judeo-Christian values and Greek natural law reasoning built human rights. They built prosperity, peace, and artistic beauty, which, again, heretofore did not exist in, uh, no anywhere in the planet. Yeah. Uh, Jerusalem and Athens built America, ended slavery, defeated the Nazis and the communists, lifted billions from poverty, and gave billions spiritual purpose. Okay, I'm going to go through those. The sort of foggy, like the mystification that's going on here with history, where he's like, it's all this unbroken chain leading to, right now, our most perfect of all worlds, which is based on Greek natural law. I'm sorry, all of that classic 5th century Athens shit that we all love so much... They love the hell out of slavery. Yeah. They, 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 that's really why it's foundational to the whole. That's project. why they had all the free time but to also, fucking be, you know, thinking about just caves think and about shit. bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But also, like, we literally regressed from that anyway into Western society. Into we we innovated slavery into chattel slavery, which is literally worse than the oh, whole way you're talking about slavery. And, yeah. it. And, and, and it was by refining it that we were able to supercharge capitalism. I mean, yeah, capitalism, and just accelerate capital, through to like, developing the nation. Capitalism is the nitro booster in the engine of, of, or I mean, slavery is the nitro booster in the engine of capitalism. It catalyzed it. It pushed in so much raw material and, and, and liquefied the markets to such a degree that it made capital accumulation so much faster and it exacerbated technological innovation. It was the fuel in the fucking rocket sled of capitalism, slavery. It made it possible. Jerusalem and Athens drank (laughs) were the foundations of the Magna Carta and love the, and the Treaty of China. Westphalia. Oh, I love they it. They were the foundations of the Declaration of Independence. Big fan of the Treaty, <laughs> the Treaty of Westphalia. West- it gets my dick so hard, oh, the Treaty it. of Westphalia. Abraham- I prefer the Treaty of Windphalia, but what are you going to do? <laughs> Abraham. Win- no. West. <laughs> Windphalia. <laughs> Wait a minute. West. Yeah, Wind. Yeah. <laughs> win. Not fail. Win. This is, no. well, this is you- where Wind's Treaty <laughs> Now you guys got you guys got to see how the sausage get made. Yeah, man. <laughs> sometimes you have a problem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Declaration of Independence, Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation <laughs> Proclamation. This is a, a free toke episode, and by the way. Martin Luther King's letter of from course. Birmingham Jail. Yes. So so just everything you barely remember from junior high history. Okay, so uh, I, in the previous sentence, he uh, in the previous paragraph he said Jerusalem and Athens defeated uh, the Nazis. In the next sentence, he says, in the next paragraph, he says, civilizations that rejected Jerusalem and Athens shot. Marx beat the, beat the Nazis. And the, and the tension between them have collapsed into dust. The USSR rejected Judeo Christian values and, they and Greek beat natural the law, substituting the values of collective, the collective, and a new utopian vision of social justice. And they starved and slaughtered tens of millions of human beings. And like I said, uh, also defeated the Nazis in World yeah. War II. The Nazis. Like, I don't understand. Like he comes to these great thinkers. He does mention Marx. He completely doesn't understand Marx at all. But if you're going to say, if you're going to attribute the wins of societies created by thinkers, then Marx beat the Nazis. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, he got those turnip farmers to get their shit together. Oh, they got their yeah. shit together. We are in the process of abandoning Judeo-Christian values oh, and no. Greek natural law, oh, no. favoring moral subjectivism and the rule of passion. The funny thing about Greek natural law is that, like, natural law is what's always cited by like yeah. weirdo catholic reactionaries yeah, to, like yeah. as their justification for why sodomy is like always a sin and yeah. wrong ironically though, you know who also the invented Greeks. sodomy they love Athens. It. they love that shit <laughs> their natural law did not their natural law was uh towels optional i think their natural law said that it was okay as long as you just held their thighs together oh right yeah you had to yeah. frottage them you couldn't yeah. go in yeah yeah interesting 
Yeah. See, there, it was, doesn't yeah, have anything about that. Was, that, that, was, that was coined by the Greek philosopher Sisyphus. <laughs> <laughs> but just think of this very small example, how much is lost in his retelling of these things and how yeah, much exactly, simplifies yeah. it into a cartoon, the personal relationship to reality. And he goes, oh, and we are watching our civilization collapse into age old tribalism, individualistic hedonism and moral subjectivism. Make no mistake. We are still living off the prosperity of the world built by, what are those two cities again? Jerusalem, Jerusalem and, Athens, and Athens. But see, this is perfect in that it ex- totally exemplifies how it's a fairy tale. Because given the way he describes the miracle of, of Athens and Jer- Jerusalem, they, that should be uninterrupted glory and, uh, and uh, improvement until the end time. It should right. be an unbroken string of development like it's the perfect right. it's the best system therefore it's going to persist well why did we abandon it and exactly and the answer down. is evil wizards <laughs> and it is it's it's just totally ide- idealistic horseshit about like this evil wizard named marx cast a spell and this other evil wizard named martin luther came down right. and that those people bewitched people's minds into uh, going for do, going back to their their awful human and matt Right. Uh, the actually, the and re- now we actually, live under Toronto and Gainesville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tragic. It's been terrible for society. Right. <laughs> As you said about the wizards, the vast majority of this book is him taking his reader who, again, like, Ben Shapiro, as dumb as he is, I will give him credit for knowing how stupid his fans oh, are. Yeah. The respect he has for his fans is summed up in the fact that he sells them caffeine pills for $70 uh, yeah, a bottle. If anybody is hawking survival seeds or, or, or miracle brain tonics to you, that means they don't give a shit about your intellect. In fact, they're betting on you being a dumbass because they wouldn't sell any of so them. Ben, Shapiro, ben Shapiro's fans are either like the most bullied kids in their schools mm-hmm. or like college sophomores who are all named Dylan yeah. who like uh, like drink two, two natty shandies and are like, last night was savage. <laughs> <laughs> and That's exactly just wa- what it's And like. just watch like Ben Shapiro owning trans people cringe comp. No, but man, you said like, uh, like that... Uh, the magical cities gave us the winning formula yep. that was winning for we eternity. We got the key that went into the yeah. magic rock, and then like, and then the evil wizards like turned us away from it. The vast majority of this book, which thank dear Christ, I'm not going to read to you on the oh, show. No. The vast majority of like the middle chapters of the entire book is him going through and uh, giving you this high school freshman history of the Enlightenment and its major thinkers, and telling you which ones were good and which ones are bad. Yeah, and he's like John Locke, good. Rousseau, bad. bad. And well, the reason he knows they're good that, at- again, his readers like they just want the footnotes. Yeah. And the reason that one is good and the other is bad is one is a liberal, the other is a conservative. Yeah. But no, but one is a liberal and conservative based entirely on su- subjective definitions of what liberal and conservative means in 21st oh, century America. Oh, God, he America. is so is- is historical. Just absolute contempt for any kind of historical context for anything. Everything is evaluated from 21st century, conser- just superficial conservative uh, uh, uh array like that's it you know oh yeah so the roost, yeah it's awful the ties that bind us together are fraying those ties were forged through fire and water reason and prayer game of thrones baby tonight i'm so fucking psyched gambo's <laughs> gonna get that throne baby he's gambo's throne for a reason forged through fire and water forged through fire and water reason and prayer again he's a terrible writer just awful the tension between Jerusalem and Athens drink is real by removing the tension by abandoning either Jerusalem or Athens drink oh, colla- just, collapses this is, this the bridge built between the two. So we say there's Jerusalem and Athens, but they're in tension. And what Western civilization did was build the bridge. But now the bridge is rickety. See, this, and is, it's like, this is like dialectics if you have a head injury. Because that is a dialectical reasoning that he is doing, but it's totally ideal. It's totally idealistic. It doesn't bear any relationship to material now, now, conditions. Now there are two. There are two cities in the world. So you got South Bend. That's where Notre Dame is, <laughs> and you got Des Moines. Now my brother lives in South Bend, and we haven't we haven't talked in a while. But in in Des Moines, uh, there's a Culver's that's open till twelve, <laughs> but they're very far away, and when the interstate is crowded. That's when things get rough. This is just like this is just a boring guy talking yeah. about <laughs> geography. This is just yeah. a boring, this is, confused this guy. Is, this is this sucks, man. This is nothing. To quote so, Hannibal this Burris. is absolutely he nothing. Up, he can't even really make up his mind about anything. Like he has like these semi-positive but conflicted views of like 
the way Christianity developed and its role in society. He doesn't, he's, he wrote a book so that dumb people can feel smart because they can refer to Hume. This yeah, is, yeah how, exactly. How many, how many, that's exactly. As Hobbes would say. <sighs> how many pages do you stretch out of this? Oh, not man. that long. I don't it's know. not he, that he, long. He stretched the whole. No, he's not. He's not going to give you a tall. Let me, let me, let me, let me let me check I wouldn't be surprised if it's less than it's 300 pages. It's 288 pages. I knew it. That's, yeah. still, no, pages. that's still, that's that's still long. amazing. No. It's long for what he has. Which oh, is it's nothing. long for what he has, but in terms of his pretensions, it's hilarious. Because that's well, a there booklet. Are, there are wide margins. That's a booklet for dullards. <laughs> he widened the margins. That's a thing to read on the crapper. And also, then you come out going, ah, now that uh, was what, that was quite a locky and dump I took. Sorry, uh, what like uh, just two quick points I want to make. Like he says that line, and it's on the jacket copy to his book. Civilizations that rejected Jerusalem and Athens have collapsed into dust. Again, where does China f- or, yeah. or India fit into this equation? Yeah, they had a hell, China had a hell had, of a blow had, up. They've they had they a say. pretty good run. Yeah, even by his own metrics. And like, forget the you know communist Be revolution. Be careful you in high school. Yeah. But like you know, China has existed almost. Well, that's because like, there's no. These things are. What he's done is he's taken all the good things that people like and said these are these are exemplified by a a, 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 a cast of characters who are embody their good qualities. All the bad things are embodied in these people who are a cast of characters who embody their bad qualities. And then they just have it's it's like it's literally recreating Olympian fucking mythology because now they're fighting on Mount Olympus. Uh, but, uh, to, for the soul of humanity. See, and we I have thought, nothing to say about it. I thought it was more like the animatronic Hall of Presidents. Also that, you know, it's all, you always like have to have just, an array of names. You hear a little, yeah, and they kind of like move mechanically yep. and you come out of it being like, was that educational? Yeah. I am Jeremy Bentham, the <laughs> yes. utilitarian philosopher. The greatest for the, good, for for the, the greatest, greatest number. number of people. Yeah, and uh, that's that's what the, but that's what this is in book. Four. I haven't. I don't know if he references Bentham in this book or where he falls on he him, does. but I'm going to guess he's against he does. Bentham. I oh, think no, I think no, 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 he no, no, like no. puts it in the same paragraph with like Thomas Aquinas or something. Yeah. Like it's just it's just he's just name dropping, name dropping. He has like your worst friend who is like, though. yeah. Yesterday I was talking to my friend Natasha Leone. It's like your worst because utilitarianism is like one of their best. Noirs, yeah, and in, in his that's one of the evil spirits as he so, uh, and like the, the second point I want to make, aside from I'm the fact feeling, that he, yeah. he glosses over like you know vast swaths of human history that don't conform to the Jerusalem Athens yeah. uh, theorem, all this ghost stuff, this all these spirits he's invoking, I'm feeling like Sterner right now. <laughs> um, point the other thing is like he keeps saying that like you know we're. We're so, uh, that, like, the Enlightenment, as in the masterful genius words of Jonah fucking Goldberg, <laughs> was this, like, miracle where, like, just the, so, like, the key turned in everyone's uh, mind. They're like, oh, well, like, we will no, like, we no longer be tribalistic and governed by our, like, baser the instincts. The square root and, of the yeah. triangle is equal to the freedom of the remaining sides. It should, I'm sure, as it will not come as any great shock to any of you listening to this show, uh, ben Shapiro is intensely driven by tribalistic loyalties and racial hatreds. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all know his famous comment that Arabs, Jews build things where Arabs enjoy living in sewage. They enjoy like dogs. living in sewage. They enjoy li- living in sewage. They it, love it. Search, They're not human beings. Search any of his comments on any of the uh, teenage black kids murdered oh, by the police, God, yeah. and you will see some fairly obvious and base tribalism yep. uh, beginning to uh, express itself. You know, I, I would say a product of maybe unenlightened, unenlightenment thinking. Yeah, but that's because the, 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 bad, the bad guys in his teleology are others. Racial others, religious others, cultural others that like, are outside of his perfect little world and are trying to undermine it. For people on the left, like the, the, the things fucking up places are, are the actual people who benefit from the way things are. Those are the bad guys. Those are the, the ne- nemesis. That's the cause of the problem. That's the person that you have to deal with is the person whose material benefit is things staying as bad as they are and getting worse. And that's the difference between the left and right in terms of how you view like, what the cause of social decay and, and problems are. And, and we say, no, it's the people benefiting from it, not the people, in most cases, who have the least amount of actual power in the society. Those are the people who he thinks are most responsible for its decline. So I'm not going to do all of chapter one, but this is the one I read, and it's called The Pursuit of Happiness. And okay. it's all about what makes people happy. And his answer to that question is a uh, moral purpose that is decided by a belief in God. Yeah. The Judeo-Christian God specifically. Yep. Getting your hole filled makes you happy. You got to fill the hole daily. Mm-hmm. So, and he goes, chapter one begins, are you happy? 
It's a question my wife asked me one day a few years ago, probably because I was, um, as per usual, skulking around like a miserable little cunt with a dumb look on my face. <laughs> crying after crying and Bradford bitching and whining cuck. constantly. Yeah, yeah, take that, man. Intolerant. Uh, he goes, we were going through a stressful period. My wife is a doctor, and she was working oh, God, brutal really hours. Bad? You'd never mention it. Our youngest child, Gabriel, that's like uh, Ashley Schaefer in fucking Eastbound and Down. <laughs> Gabriel, my boy Gabriel, he walked in on me and my wife. I said, you watch, boy. Our youngest child, Gabriel, was waking up at all hours of the night. Our eldest, Leah, was going through a stretch in which he'd burst into tears at the tiniest provocation. Are you sure that wasn't your wife, Ben? Yeah, seriously. Uh, and, I, and work was trying to. My business partners and I were working to get our website, The Daily Wire, functioning at top level. Uh, read into that. Get some bizarre, like, dark money billionaire yep. to underwrite yep. our blogging and yeah, emailing exactly. it. Yeah. So that, you know, I can uh, cash a fat check yeah, by after doing my hard, videos. My, my tough weekend in a hot tub with Sheldon Adelson. Yeah. Oh, God. No, I'm just imagine imagine? That. Felix, do you like thinking about that? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm imagining it. you know how like, like soup gets a skin on the top. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about how there's got to be. Like, I'm imagining a there's like it's a, it's a it's Sheldon Adelson, so it's like a giant hot oh, yeah. tub. Yeah. But there's sort of like like a like a like a ramp slash water slide that they like they pull up his little motor scooter and then sort of dump him into it. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like <laughs> like a lobster, like a turkey, just like <laughs> like yeah, slides and like into a lobster. It. The air escaping from oh, his folds yes. make a screaming yes, noise. Yes, yes. Oh god, I, I, he looks I, like Zoidberg without his shell. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even going to say, you know, because that's the dream is to share the hot tub with Sheldon Adelson. Oh, God. I just want to lick the residue out of the hot tub after they drain it. <laughs> oh, Another yeah. connection here. Uh, Steve Bannon, well-known hot tub pimp. And like, murderer, most yeah, likely. He, like, he, dissolved the, he dissolved the body in a hot he tub in a did. rental property. He did a Walter White on someone's rental property. There's no other explanation. He uh, allegedly. He, 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 he fucked it up, though. Like everything, instead of being like, I'm Heisenberg. He was like, I am Dr. Asperger. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he goes on to talk a lot about the pursuit of happiness and the phrase the pursuit of happiness, as we know. And he's like, ah, we say it's the pursuit of happiness. People think government can give you happiness yeah, yeah. through health care or a day basic, basic yeah. standard of living. Basic but that, fundamental but, social but you'd order. be wrong. Uh, the thing I want to point out again in this chapter and how utterly lazy and ahistorical he is in this um invocation that like you know uh progress cannot exist without uh virtue and virtue cannot exist without our inha inherent moral reasoning which cannot exist without uh the judeo-christian the yeah, god of abraham of course. right he glosses over entirely in, in, in like sucking off the founding fathers for creating the perfect document and perfect system of government yep. that they were by and large deists mm -hmm. who rejected orthodox christianity explicitly yeah he talks about Je he goes on and on about Jefferson. He's like, "This is why Jefferson knew we weren't guaranteed happiness." Yeah. But again, mentions nothing about Jefferson. Literally, was so full of himself that he, he did his own remix to the Bible. He did. He cut out the miracles. <laughs> he cut out the miracles of the Bible. And it was, it was just the the moral teachings of Jesus yep. of Nazareth is what he called. Get it. all that hogwash out of there. That is an alpha. That is definitely a pimp move. Gotta admit it. In this sub, in this that is, that is literally the equivalent of like translating the Bible into Klingon, or or it's like those <laughs> that guy who made the, the return of the the Last Jedi without any women in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the modern equivalent. Uh, I said this one highlighted. This is like a subhead to the chapter. Happiness is moral purpose. Pleasure can be gained from a variety of activities. Like Golf, filling your hole. <laughs> well, pleasure can be gained from a variety of activities. Getting that nut. Golf. Fishing, playing with your children, sex. I would yeah, reverse man, the order. I love that, yeah. like in his brain. Like there are here are the five things that can make you happy. Golf. I'm sorry <laughs> yeah. if golf makes you happy. Your your brain. And dead. if it's you're number so one scared, on the man. list, you're a psycho. Uh, fishing. Oh my god, he's never. He's fished never been fishing in his life. In his life. No. He would be the fucking bait. First of all, all <laughs> only goys fish. We know Except this. Except for Felix it's Law. No, I've caught a fish. <laughs> I'm one for one in he's all my the fishing He's the goyest Jew, though. We know yes, that. Yeah, he's yeah, a I, I'm, boy. I literally have a 100% success rate for fishing. I've never gone it's fishing. It's like your slot machine call. system. You're like, I got a system for this. No, no, like, the the, no, 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 no. The slot machine system, that's strategy and that's not reaction it. times, <laughs> mathematics. Whereas the fishing, that's just all luck and bullshit. No one's good mm. at fishing. You're just lucky. You can be good at slots, though. <laughs> Okay, so uh, <laughs> sex is at the bottom of his list. Yeah, not 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 quite as fun as uh, golf. Yeah, that is sketch is hooking an angler. <laughs> oh, I got a I got a trout tonight. And he goes, amoral activities can bring us pleasure. 
that temporary high, like golf, that sex. feeling of forgetting yeah. our cares. Yeah, the, golf is also deeply amoral. Yeah. I mean, think about the water that it takes to yeah, fucking use. Golf is <laughs> not even no. amoral. It's criminal. It's a criminal <laughs> waste of land. Yeah. Golf is like and resources. If we can do for a two for one, that's that's the grand compromise. Conservatives want to get rid of college. You know, as do I. Yes, we have yes. to get rid of golf. Get rid too. of golf. Golf and college. If we get rid of golf and college, that's a grand bargain. That's, we might, yeah, we that's, might have, we that's might have like thirty percent of our like economic and class problems okay. yeah. solved. If we got rid of both of those, there might be like three more generations of humanity. Honestly. Yeah, we could yeah. honestly stretch it out this a little is, bit further. This is the yeah. new. This is the new bargain. Jerusalem and Athens. That's over. Now we're making the grand bargain between uh, uh, Berkeley and Orlando, Florida. Yep. Yeah. Golf and college. Golf and college. Get rid of them. Done with them. Crap. Done. <laughs> Crap. No more of either of that bullshit. Mm -hmm. I don't see why rich people can't just play with tech decks. Yeah. Play video games. Foosball. Have sex with their no. friends. The ballers thing Chavez ever can... did was or take over the fucking golf courses. And turn yeah, that was def housing. definitely cool. That was dope. The uh, amoral activities can give us that temporary high. He's talking about chewing yeah. and getting off that lounge. The feeling of forgetting our cares. However, that pleasure is never enough. Lasting happiness can only be achieved through cultivation of soul and mind, which presumably he means watching Prager U videos, yep, yep. or or actually, if he's being honest, watching my YouTube videos. Me, Ben yes. Shapiro, watch me on well, trans does, people. How does Ben Shapiro like do either? Is it just like when he plays violin with his dad? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Thing. that's literally what he What's means. He, that he sucks, goes, dude. He goes around the country just grimly triggering the libs. Is yeah. that a fulfilled? Person? Yeah, he just meets like he just. He that's not a happy person. All right. All he, also, he like. Often Operates a website while his wife is a doctor, yeah, which all, he brings up a lot, but I think with some shame. All all he does like you is could like, cultivate your inner fucking garden if you didn't have all this hole to fill with all this bullshit. All He's he does, miserable. Yeah. All he does is yeah, go to like whatever California, like go to Pomona or whatever, yeah. and like find some like nineteen year old who's on like three different types of benzodiazepines. <laughs> Who can like barely make it through the question while like twelve <laughs> daily wire cameras are on her and just d demolish her with logic, yep. just absolutely demolish her. That sucks, dude. You're not cultivating shit. You cultivate, cultivate. Nothing. You're my finding ass, the dude. weakest people who are literally going to see you yeah, to be you're, triggered. You're just abusing people. You're abusing fragile people. It's like a bum, it's intellectual bum fights. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so yeah, it's. Literally just the guy who took a month worth of karate classes yeah. beating up everyone in his hometown. Yeah. It's some it Danny sucks, man. Shit. Stop it. <laughs> so he, he goes on a bit. Oh, God. A movie, a movie about Danny McBride triggering libs on college campuses. <laughs> oh, being that's like, a, Being like a grifter style, like a, like a Ben guy. Oh, my God. That's pretty good. So he, uh, except it would probably have to be played by Walton Goggins instead of Danny. They, well, he well, could be a competing yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> A different guy so, on the scene. Uh, that's actually a good idea. And then, I'm writing that and then they become friends. Of course. Oh, yeah. So I'm he, go, he goes on to talk about like the, how the Bible's vision of happiness is we just surprised you to know that uh, God wants you to be happy, but that doesn't mean uh, ch just chewing or having sex yeah, right. or doing anything fun. And Go God to mentions nothing and about he, chewing. And he goes, if this, that's where you're wrong, Amber. <laughs> if you read the Bible closely, there are many coded references. To, <laughs> uh, uh, he goes, if all this sounds like a more restrictive version of happiness than we're used to, that's because it is. Happiness isn't rolling around in the mud at Woodstock, <laughs> nor it's is rocking the fuck out at Woodstock '99. You are the oldest young man in the world, and then he making goes, a Woodstock reference. And then he These goes, are presumably college students reading this. You can't even again, say Woodstock '99. Still, like and he goes, the child prodigy just means you're stunted. At an age that you we're never surrounded were. by your, your yeah. odd like, uncle, like your aunt sitting around smoking, going, "Oh my God, look at him!" Their yeah. references are your like references Ben is life. like Ben is like in his he's like seventy years old because he says like at Woodstock he could have just said like a weekend at Coachella yeah. on Molly or something, but he goes, "Nor is it a nice golf game after a rough week of work." These are like the two poles in his that's mind. The, that's these the are, these two are like balls the, of human the, behavior. The, the, freak, <laughs> the freaked out hippies, man. Oh They're rolling around oh in the wood, God, the mud at Woodstock, and then he's like, uh, "The square upright <laughs> businessman goes plays a golf after a hard oh week in the God, office." That's true. Oh, oh fuck, that's so true. It's like when he closes his eyes, heaven is like an Enzite commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and hell is, yeah, it's like the footage from Martin Scorsese's Woodstock. Do not eat the brown acid.
whoa, man. But he's telling you, you know, he's mature enough to tell you, hey, golf guy, hey, wavy gravy. Uh, these things may feel good, but that's actually not real important yeah. happiness and yeah. moral yeah. meaning yeah. in your life. Find this is the, his attempt the, to turn the chair around and sit in it yeah. wrong way. Yeah. But, like, he just guy, trips over his Have like, you ever loafers? heard of a guy named J.C.? Judeo Christian. <laughs> yeah, you may think it's cool to, you know, golf for 30 years and collapse of cardiac arrest on the green while all your friends named Harold <laughs> look at your body and a golf cart runs over your head. That may be cool to you. Or it may be cool. It may be cool. It may be cool to smoke seven bowls out of a bong and uh, inject acid. While while uh, the monkeys are playing, <laughs> but you know what's actually cool to find the nearest nineteen year old who's already crying and destroy them. <laughs> oh my god! So he goes. Uh, happy oh, that, that is a good point. They are already crying. Yeah, they yeah. Literally... Before he even says it, he finds the crying one. He finds I've, the yeah, crying one. I've watched it's, those... It's shooting crying fish in a barrel. Yep. I've watched those videos, like the Ben Shapiro most savage moment videos, and like literally all... They're already like shaking. Like they come up to the mic and they're like, oh, Mr. Yeah. Shapiro, yeah, like... Come on, man. Like, again, like, uh, yeah, my I just got triggered by if, an Arby's commercial. If Ben Shapiro like, approaches, you, approaches you to own you or debate you, like, it's, it's not difficult. Just yeah. say, like, uh, fuck you, little man, and just ruffle his yeah, hair. Ruffle his hair. <laughs> or just be like, oh, look at the little fella. This, like, is, this is a rhetorical like, uh, technique. Oh, oh, is that okay? Is that a microphone? Oh, look at you, little uh, guy. Hey, hey, is it a rhetorical hey, how about you technique my that I, that I uh, heard of, um, you know, from Buckley that is just called giving someone a wedgie that you could literally, you could get away with it. What would he do? Oh, you could What would he him? do? You could, pull, you could fucking hang him on a doorknob. Yeah. You do dangling. Yeah. Kicking his little feet. Kicking his little feet. In the Kicking air. at the clouds. So he oh, says, little guy. Uh, you know, happiness is not uh, it's not a golf game and it's not Woodstock. It's the pursuit of purpose in our lives. Oh, damn. If we have lived with moral purpose, even death becomes less painful. Here's one of my favorite parts. When Washington Post columnist Charles Krauthammer knew mm. that his death was imminent, oh. he, uh, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just. Smiling a little to myself, think, thinking back on the, right, moment when, the moment in which his conscious brain knew that his own death was imminent. Wait, it's hold on a second. So, um, Let me just say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I just, he's just, this is like an insult to Victor Frankl. Oh, yeah. This he, is he, such name an, checks he name checks Victor Frankl. This is and, such an assault on Victor Frankl. Like the guy who is a fucking, who like lived through the Holocaust and just basically invented this amazing new way of thinking and wrote this seminal work. And just Ben Shapiro is like, yeah, I go to uh, I go to college campuses and find people with that badly dyed hair and argue with them. I'm the same <laughs> as you. Like it just but he goes, very, it's just very, it, it's hurtful to me. More than anything, you love to see it. Well, <laughs> I do <laughs> love says, to see it. He wrote an ant a letter in anticipation of his passing. Here's what that great souled man wrote. Uh, I believe that the pursuit of truth and right ideas through honest debate and rigorous argument is a noble undertaking. I leave this life with no regrets. Wow. I, I, uh, well, out of it. Well, one regret. Wait, wait, maybe. One regret. <laughs> one regret. Don't dive in that Don't swimming dive pool. In the pool. <laughs> I mean, he, he has to See, I was going to say, like, if Charles Krauthammer did indeed leave a, lead a moral life, uh, he would be leaving life uh, racked with unbearable guilt about yeah. the millions of people he helped kill in well, the yeah. insane wars that he started for moral and yeah. just reasons. You, you heard him though. His, no regrets. In his no regrets. In his dog shit, doc, Davros, Doctor Who style villain. Yeah. But, no, he was he's the closest thing in the op-ed world we had to Doctor fucking Strangelove. I mean, he was just this perverse figure. of, of You worship death like a lot of these guys. Uh, Felix, you brought up Victor Frankl literally the next page. As Austrian psychiatrist Viktor Frankl wrote is. in his There's stirring memoir about surviving the Holocaust, Man's Search for Meaning, woe to him who saw no more sense in his life, no aim, no purpose, and therefore no point in carrying on. Viktor Frankl would just euthanize you. Frankl's like feeling... If he talked to you and you told him, you're like, yeah, uh, golf is one way to live your life. Another way to live your life is to play violin with your dad. Frankl would just like... He would just like throw his brow and look at his notes and just write, you know, euthanize immediately. He's not getting better. <laughs> he's never finding purpose. Sometimes death is kinder. Yeah, but I like you, he's got a fucking. He's got he's got a chapter about like the meaning of life, and then, then there's a guy who wrote a book, literally, man, search for meaning. I mean, he's just running up the flag. It's just I'm just giving you the signifiers. 
What would you expect in a chapter about that? Man's search for meaning. He's Hack. everything is like everything is sort of Chekhov's gun with Shapiro, but it's yeah. Chekhov's book. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's it. He will always make the most obvious fucking book drop. And he's name like drop. he's like an AdSense algorithm. Yeah. Ah, I see you're interested in meaning. Well, another book I've read. No, totally. Or another absolutely. book I know of. No, absolutely. It's like it's every every. It's cliche. It's a cliche list. So, uh, ben Shapiro, read Nausgaard 2019. <laughs> now that like, would be something. He likes I'm reading Nausgaard. He's rocks. Yeah. He's the man. I like this section. He says, even the most ardent atheists have <sighs> historically conceded that much. Voltaire famously stated, I want my lawyer, my tailor, my servants, even my wife to believe in God because I, believes it, I believe it means that I shall be cheated and robbed and cuckolded less often. If God did not exist, it would be necessary to invent him. I think a very funny quote by, yeah, uh, by Voltaire. Yeah, but again, God, God ben Shapiro is bringing back to the cuckolding thing. Yeah, it's yeah. the he second time he's brought he that up. Yeah. Back around. Without belief in our innate individual value, we collapse into animals incapable of seeking moral purpose, even though we feel the need for it beating in our chest. Again, I just want to underscore again, Ben Shapiro has literally written an article, not just a tweet saying, Collateral damage and civilian casualties in Iraq and of Arabs, like doesn't matter to me. I think nope, it's okay and worth think about it. it at all. Because like I've made the moral judgment in mind that like their lives aren't literally he said that their lives aren't worth the same as even a single American soldier. Yep, he said that. Now that's that's the fucking meaning. That's just moral math. That's the moral meaning right there. He goes into talk about he goes there's another line I like. All of the American founders were self help specialists. <laughs> Wait a minute. They sure as hell didn't help themselves pick the fucking cotton. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, and he says Washington spent his formative years copying out rules for civility. <laughs> and he this mentions is, Ben. You know, wait, wait, those two things have to do with each other. And he goes, wait, Benjamin Franklin was a notorious devotee of self betterment. He actually created a calendar of virtues, seeking to wipe out his tendency toward wrongdoing. Another thing, uh, Ben Franklin was a notorious devotee of French widows and divorcees. Of course, yeah. yo, my man, gotten it in uh, prostitutes and meetings of the Hellfire Club. You know that? Yep. Mm -hmm. He went. He, him and like. Uh, Jonathan Isher, whatever his name, and were like having weird orgies underneath a church when he lived in London. He was a fucking perv. Everyone in charge has always done that. Yeah, of course. Is real. They just have you know mislocated the you know the yeah. the centrality of. It. I would love so like, All the good things these guys did in his mind can all be defined by their essential virtues. Everything bad they did is just oops, a mistake or something. Oh, yeah, it's an aberration, uh, aberration and not the actual the reflection he, of... You get to pick which one counts. He gets yeah. to pick which part, which aspect of their character and their behavior counts. I would love to have an orgy in the 18th century. Oh, God. I bet that's really amazing. It? I bet the smells oh, the, would yeah. be The wafting amazing. smell. Oh, man. I would love to get the lead... corsets. I would, I would love to get lead uh, poisoning from my maiden's yes. makeup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That would I love be so good. I love wearing a condom made out of a lobster shell. Removing <laughs> <laughs> uh, all those smegma covered lacy collars. Oh, oh baby. A lacy collar right around. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Set up a pearl necklace you get a lacy collar. Um, uh, Gross. Oh, uh, we love to think about it. We um, love to think about how, it. Uh, how by the way, we uh, continue to not species. lobsters. Sex used um, to be way grosser. Uh, French women and, and prostitutes would use uh, citrus rinds as diaphragms, yep. which actually kind of worked because the acid would uh, kill yeah, sperm. Yeah, but you burn your pussy with citric acid. Yeah, I imagine it yeah. hurts as well. <laughs> It yeah. can't feel good. No, it's the, oh, the past sucks so bad. Oh, well, talk, so talk, bad. Okay, the past talk, sucks so like, bad. We're, talk we're not bad. pinker people here, but like the past definitely sucks. Oh, it was so Olden bad. times were bad. Oh, so, my God. Okay, we're, so here's, here's the synthesis, though. They put orange peels in their cooters. <laughs> so Dan Quinn realized that the orange peel... <laughs> Speaking well, of playing the violin, well, he realized that the orange peel had nothing to do with speak eating pussy. Chetualic. That eating pussy had to do with music the violin mm. the orange peel could help in smoking weed and could help him beat nine hits off of one bowl and potentially <laughs> win the weed smoking olympics <laughs> uh playing violin with my dad taught me how to eat pussy <laughs> yeah <laughs> dan quinn is jerusalem and athens yes he's 100 yes. percent. he's built the bridge yeah mm -hmm. i could write dan quinn is baltimore <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dan Quinn's Sacramento. He's the most Sacramento man. He's the most NorCal man. Mm. I think everyone in Nor in Northern California, they just wake up in their cars and start recording into their phones. <laughs> like that's how. Like if you're married and you want your wife to like go to the grocery store on the way home from work, you just your phone's on your dashboard and you're like, "All right, listen up, you fucking pussy." Well, I've been told you. <laughs> that's why. That, that that is essentially one of the reasons I uh, uh I I find I find myself. Physically repulsed by Ben Shapiro's or any of these videos, or like 
owning a liberal or owning a you know homeless person with logic or whatever is because I like YouTube videos where people get called out and owned, but like Dan Quinn, that that's the real shit. Mm-hmm. Where he calls out Crazy Joe <laughs> or, was... or the woman knocking on the door of the yeah. Burger King I'm bathroom. Busy. <laughs> it was the Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks bathroom, yeah. I, I admit YouTube used to be something awful happened where YouTube used to be just people like in their bathroom mirrors being like, and another thing for all you fucking pussies out there. Yeah, I've had sex. Like <laughs> it, it that went away and it just became like Prager U. Prager U and just algorithm. It sucked. It became like produced versions of that. Ben Shapiro could never be as compelling like, as Demonious Acts. The thing is, like, like I, I've been reading, never, I've true. been reading you, you guys, this and you, the listener, of this book. Like, again, I cannot be stressed enough. Ben Shapiro is routinely talked about as a leading intellectual figure cool on the right, philosopher. the cool kids philosopher, as the New York Times described him. His writing is dog shit, and it, and it is written by a stupid person for yep. stupid people. Yep. He cannot craft a compelling sentence or paragraph to save his life no nope. the, the the parts where he actually is describing his like you know thesis or like the statements he's laying out are such childish nonsense that like it is like a freshman in college the worst paper part that would get a that c is, is this is a stupid pe- person talking down to you mm. that's what it is it's yeah, like he he's, still has he's contempt, condescending to you in the prose for, while yeah. being a fucking dullard which yep. is the worst possible combination. Yeah. All right, uh, uh, people with uh, an undue sense of intellectual confidence. Yeah. Just the best people. Here's, just, okay, here's another uh, line that I really okay. like that will speak to his uh, abilities as a writer. Our society was built on on recognition of these four elements. Uh, th- th- those uh, are, fire. No, no, fire. no. no, 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 no. <laughs> it's breakdancing, graffiti, emceeing. <laughs> and, uh, no, uh, Fine, torture, kill. He says, sorry, the, the four elements, according to Ben, are... Individual moral purpose, mm. individual capacity, mm. collective moral purpose, mm. and collective capacity. So that's just two things that he's applying to. In, like that's just hey, two things. I got an idea. I got an idea. We people need uh, humans need purpose in a, in a godless age. Uh, I agree. Uh, how about building fucking socialism? How's that for a purpose? How about getting humans to a point where we actually are free of the burdens of fucking history and of capitalism? And can begin the fucking the very first time in history begin the process of even trying to achieve human potential, all of which can only be done in the context of socialism, which we are f- horribly far from, and which we have a responsibility personally and morally and in, and collectively to fucking pursue, and that we could actually just find purpose in doing that or uh, ma- making uh, or ma- or like you know allowing the ca- the planet to be inhabitable thirty yeah. fucking years. There's from another now. fucking there's purpose. a huge purpose. That's a there's- good one. Does, like, are you going to tell me that a guy on a fucking uh, sinking battleship trying to get guys into the, the, the lifeboats, that that guy doesn't have meaning in that moment? He's got more meaning than he ever will again in his life. Okay, I hear what that's where we are. I hear what you're saying, but like, can I counter that with, but what about Jerusalem and Athens? <laughs> yeah. I would like to speak on those two cities for a moment, if I would. Oh, Jerusalem is going to be a fucking lazy river if we don't do something. Uh, okay, so those are the four elements, but this, this, is the, this is the thing I highlighted that I really like. Our society was built on the recognition of these four elements. The fusion of Athens and Jerusalem tempered by the wit and wisdom of the founding fathers. Like they're fucking like a Dave Barry book or yeah. something. Like, I, I, it's well, tempered by their, the so their, co- their potent quotables of uh, Ben Franklin. In ben, Shapiro's, in ben Shapiro's mind, the founding fathers changed human history by writing fan fiction about this Jerusalem and Athens. This guy's literally like a fucking Muppet in a kitchen going, well, you take a pitch of freedom... <laughs> And a dash of Judeo Christianity, and it comes out America. It's just like the same thing as like, uh, yeah, you know. Previously, I had always wondered what it would have been like if Link and Donkey Kong knew each other. <laughs> this is Kingdom Hearts shit. This is Kingdom Hearts for Western civilization. Yeah, you know what? That actually is kind of what it's like. It's it's a giant game you get to play where it's just like. Thomas Jefferson and Aristotle together? <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like the end of uh, Bill and Ted, yeah. where they're all on stage. No, this was a terrible book. I yeah. didn't enjoy the parts that I had to read. I started to glaze over after a while, and I don't want to read anything about this again. I'm reading Nausgaard, nothing but that from now on. How can probably... Nausgaard write, write books that are like literally 500 times longer and just t- and also just totally... about like moving a refrigerator with your father-in-law it's, and they're great they're totally gripping like the part Nausgaard wrote like a hundred pages about like uh, about um when he was dating a girl he didn't really like when he was 15 and it was a million times more interesting than any of this all right 
I'm just gonna I'm gonna close out the first chapter. He says here the history of the West is built on interplay between these two pillars, divine meaning and reason, and I also the two cities that we've mentioned. What were they again? Uh, St. Paul and Minneapolis. <laughs> 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 the twin cities of yes. St. Paul and And there are actually bridges connecting there them. There are a number But they're in them. a bad state of disrepair. We must invest in One infrastructure. One of them collapsed and <laughs> killed a bunch of people. We do believe that uh, Simali style ISIS has been pouring citrus acid on the bridge to weaken it over a course of three decades. <laughs> so he says... We receive our notions of divine meaning from a three millennia old lineage stretching back to the ancient Jews. We receive our notions of reason from a 2,500 year old lineage stretching back to the ancient Greeks. In rejecting those lineages, so so like, stupid. and first of all, who he is still rejecting? Doesn't even really talk about like it's just the idea what that, the, that, that these like, things well, are defined by anymore. these trajectories only, and that no other cultures presented any v- versions of them. And also, and it has nothing to do with material reality. Of course, either. like it's what's just moving ideas. these things? What's mo- in his mind? Here's, these a, here's are a guy for you, spirit. Hegel. Yeah, Hegel. he's a Hegelian. This man. This well, man is just, a filthy Hegelian. You got to turn it over, like Marx did. You got to get to where the thing moving is the actual material reality. This is all just ghosts. This is just haunting. So he goes, in rejecting those lineages, and again, like I'd like any sort of indication that America or the Western civilization has just rejected ancient Greek history or the Old Testament. I, I mean, mean, they're they, rejecting everything in the face I, of uh, capitalism, absorbing everything into yeah. a matrix of price and so he goes, and, and again, cost uh, benefit. I, I, mean, you, I, want, I want you guys to remember now. You want to talk about killing God? That we, did a hell of a lot to do We, we started out our, ta- our conversation talking about how Ben Shapiro is like... Uh, uh, it's left Breitbart because they're like, oh, they're anti-Semitic yeah. and like this is the new like sort of uh, you know racist right wing populism that I can't fully sign on to, even though I basically kind of agree with it. Here's how he ends the chapter: In rejecting those lineages, in seeking to graft ourselves to rootless philosophical movements of root- the moment, I hate those rootless cutting ourselves of off from our own roots, we have damned ourselves to an existential wandering. We have become Damn. the rootless cosmopolitan wandering Jews, and we must make our way back to our roots. Holy no, shit. No, I'm one of the good ones. Yeah, this kind of shit, that's the most anti-Semitic thing I've ever heard. He's a cuck. Now, how, you can't get more cuck than a fucking anti-Semitic Jew. He's trying to Jew. suck up to anti semites Holy now. shit. That's so, astounding. I know we've uh, we've gone along with this and probably driven, uh, definitely driven you guys crazy by reading this to you. Yeah, and, no, we've um, lost our minds. Uh, I just want to say, you know, uh, Matt, uh, any, any other things the that you one, read? The one, I, the one that always takes my eye is when he, is the potted history of America going from, you know, of reconciling the Constitution with slavery and, and Indian destruction and how you make the, the founders these, you know, paragons of human virtue when they were doing all this horrible stuff. And, of course, it's like just classic Whig history, which is the literal opposite of the dialectical materialism where it's all just ideas and everything getting better over time and just pulled magically along. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that is Ben Shapino. Those are the two cities that make the one city. We built this city on rock and roll. Been, yeah, it's <laughs> rock and roll. Um, so, but before we leave you today, we have some uh, some exciting uh, tour dates um, mm-hmm. and things to plug. plug so time. starting with, we will be doing a show Friday, April 26th at... Cornell University for their Union Days 2019 closing out their sort of it's like a week long uh, event about you know unions and labor. We are doing a show at Cornell University on Friday, April 26. Can't wait to check out the gorgeous. Oh, so many gorgeous. Uh, we uh, tickets are available. We will put the link to that in the show description. Mm-hmm. As we mentioned before, shortly thereafter that May 1st, we will be doing a uh, fundraiser show at night. Very of, excited about a this. night of Chapo. Pub quiz yes. at Housing Works in Brooklyn Woo. on May first. Uh, again, links for that will be. We will all be writing categories. And uh, Felix, I know things are probably going to change between now and then. But do you could you give anybody an example of where your head is at? Maybe where they might get your questions from. I just wake up every day. I'm like, I'm going to get nutty with it today. So uh, if you you want to get nice, you want to get nutty. <laughs> You want to learn about whatever I care about that day. It might be the romance of the three kingdoms. It might be it might be new wave cinema. It, it I may get really into tears for fears. I've already done that one, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Look, a philosopher named Ben Chapino once said that pleasure is not found in the golf course or or in the opium den. In the boardroom or the discotheque. It's found just jumping from interest to interest every week. 
uh, until you no longer have to be alone with your own thoughts. Yeah, that is so the whole goal. So whatever one I land on, then that's what you're getting. Good luck, folks. Okay, you you won't, you won't you won't get a single one, pussies. You fucking suck. Don't worry, <laughs> I'm just trying to fire them up for whatever category I pick. <laughs>